In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure ACFS for replication, how to synchronize two file systems at two different sites automatically. The replication mechanism functions in near real time. If there is a breakdown in communications between the sites, that's not a problem as long as there is enough disk space to store the changes ready for transmission when the network communications are re-established. You can replicate entire file systems or just a subset of the data or even individual files. The replication can be locally, it can even be between two file systems mounted on the same machine, or it can be wide area between two clusters or indeed of a wide area network between, say, a production site and a disaster recovery site. Note that the replication is not full duplex. In the current release, it is not bidirectional, it is one way only. Now, what about the usage case for file system replication? It is not for the database. We assume that your database is protected by other means, such as DataGuard or Streams or Golden Gate. This is about replicating non-database files, but they can be database related files. Your B file logs, the files that support your external tables, perhaps data pump dump files. This is a very good way for synchronizing the external data that would not be transmitted from primary site to standby site by DataGuard. But it can also be for replicating data that has nothing to do with Oracle at all. It could be your library of PDF files and HTML documents that's served out by your Apache web listener. Any data at all can be replicated through this mechanism. These are the steps we need to go through. First, create the disk groups and the volumes. Then we have to set up the ACFS file systems and configure SQLNet between the two sites because SQLNet is the means by which the changes are propagated. At the primary site, we have to start the service which will capture changes and transmit them. And then at the standby site, start the service which will receive the changes and apply them to its copy of the file system. Then as we monitor progress, we should see the changes being propagated in near real time. Now, I will begin at the beginning by creating my disk group and volumes. Connect to my ASM instance. And in this little demonstration environment, I've got just six devices. These two devices are already members of the group that's got my clusterware files. These four devices I'm going to be using for my ACFS file systems. I'll create a disk group called G2, external redundancy, I'm not going to bother with mirroring, and that's on devices SDD1 and SDE1. The default compatibility for an ASM disk group is the lowest possible. So I'm going to raise the compatibility to the current release, 12.1.0.2. The ASM compatibility, also the RDBMS compatibility, and finally the ACFS Dynamic Volume Manager, the ADVM compatibility to enable the latest releases of ACFS. In this demonstration, I'm going to replicate between two file systems on the same machine, purely for simplicity of the demonstration environment. So I'll create a second disk group called G3, and that's on devices SDF1 and SDG1. And raise the compatibility of that file system or disk group as well to the current release.
now I need to create the volumes on which I'm going to build my file system. On disk group G2, I'll add a volume called SRC. That's going to be my source file system. And on disk group G3, I'll create another volume called DST, my destination file system. And seeing what we've got, I'll just query V$ ASM volume, and there are my two volumes, both enabled, ready for use. To complete the configuration of the file systems, I need root privileges. If we look at the slash dev directory, there we see the block devices externalized to the operating system that I can use to format my file system. So standard Unix administration at this point, MKFS minus type ACFS on that device. So format the first volume and create a mount point for the file system. I'll create it slash MNT slash SRC and mount my newly formatted file system on that directory. Repeat the exercise for my second file system to which I'm going to replicate. So I'll format the device DST-345, my destination device. Create a mount point for that. MNT DST and mount that file system as well. How does everything look to Unix? That looks fine. There are my two file systems ready for use. In terms of the configuration steps, I've completed the first two. I've created my disk groups and my volumes. I've created and mounted the ACFS file systems. The third step is to configure network connectivity between the sites. In this demonstration, I don't need to do that because I'm replicating between two file systems both attached to the same machine. So I can proceed straight to starting the primary and standby services that will transmit and receive the changes. Within the ASM environment, I need to create a couple of users. Create user SRC, identified by SRC. This is the user I'm going to use to capture and propagate changes to the file system. And he'll need pretty high privileges. I'll grant him SysASM and SysDBA. Then at the receiving site, the standby site, we also create a user, who I shall call DST, my destination user, to receive and apply the changes and he will need the same privileges. Then I need to start the processes that will send and receive changes. This command requires a bit of breakdown. ACFS util is the utility one uses to manage anything to do with ACFS. And the aspect of ACFS I'm going to manage is replication. What do I want to do? I want to initialize the standby process. So this is the command you would run at the remote site, at the DR site. The standby process needs to know how to log on to the primary. It will connect as user SRC, password SRC, at the source environment, and a service, which I've chosen to call prim. That isn't created yet. I have to create it shortly. And we also create a standby service on the standby machine, which I shall call STBY. And we nominate the path, the file system path, to which changes should be written. So that will have got the standby service started. Then at the primary site, I need to launch the capture and propagation process. ACFS util, REPL, 
initialize the primary service. The primary service logs on to the destination, attaching to the destination service, starts its own service, the primary service, and then finally, where to write which changes. While that's initializing, if we look at the listener, we can see what's actually happening at the SQL net level. And there you see the two services have been launched. The primary service, which will capture changes and send them across, to the standby service, which will receive them and apply them to its local copy of the file system. And there we are. The replication should now be working. So, time to test the system and we'll see what's actually happening. There's the file system I'm going to replicate. I'll just create a file in it. Touch MNT SRC my file. There it is. And in near real time, that file should be propagated to the remote system. There it is, it's come across already. Note that it isn't just complete files, it's changes to files as well. If I were to edit that file, just insert something, we can see that the source file is now 11 bytes big. And if we look at the destination, the change hasn't come across yet, but it will very soon. And there it is, the change has come over. Note that the propagation isn't necessarily the entire file, it would only be the extents that happen to have been changed of the file if the file were large enough to be spread over many extents. To monitor the flow, there are any number of commands available. For example, very simple one, atfsutil, repl info, what's actually happening to my source file system. It's online, the resources are running, and we can get some idea of lag as well, if there is a delay. Note that if there is a delay, that's not a disaster. It will catch up and synchronize whenever it can. There's the information regarding my destination site, which appears to be running fine as well. And that concludes the configuration of ACFS for replication. To wrap up, what can ACFS replication do? It can maintain a DR site for you, and it is all types of file in near real time. Note that changes are captured at the file extent level. So if a file is edited rather than being created or deleted, there's only a minimal amount of information that is transmitted and applied. It can be local or wide area. I demonstrated it locally. In the real world, you're probably going to be using it across a wide area network. And of course, the whole process from now on is fully automated.